Welcome to the channel Simplified. Today we will cover time value of money, one of the most fundamental concepts in finance. The main idea behind time value of money is that money received at different points of time has different value. This is mainly because of inflation. Inflation refers to the phenomena where prices of goods and services are increasing over a period of time. For example, a loaf of bread which used to cost around 20 rupees about 8 to 10 years ago costs a minimum of 40 rupees today. Gold which used to cost around 450 rupees per gram in 2000 costs 6300 per gram in 2024. Whatever products you take, vegetables, car, petrol, gas or land, everything is always going up and this will continue to happen. No government can stop this from happening because inflation is a must for any economy to progress. As prices of products go up and up, what you can buy with the same amount of money will reduce over time. If you speak to your parents or grandparents, they will tell you about the times when they could get kgs of rice with just 1 rupee. Now there is literally nothing you can get for 1 rupee. So what the concept of time value says is that if you want to compare money flowing at different periods of time, you have to make some adjustments. It's not only when there is 20 30 years difference, but even when the difference is just one or two years, we have to make some adjustments before comparing them. This will become more clear after we go through some examples. Let's say you invested in a business with your friend. After some time, you realized you are not able to dedicate enough time to it and you want to exit and take the investment back. But the money is blocked in the business in various assets. So your partner is unable to give it back all immediately. He gives you three options for repayment. In option 1, you will get your money like this. 4 lakhs right away in 2024, 2 lakhs in 2025 and so on. In 2028, you will get the final installment. In total, you will get 16 lakhs. Under option 2 also you will get 16 lakhs over the same period, but the amount you get in each year is different. So if you only look at the total, you will think both are exactly the same. But that is not the case. This 6 lakh is not the same as this 6 lakh because they come in different years. Similarly, this 4 lakh and this 4 lakh are not of the same value. Let's also look at option 3. Under this scheme you will get only 15.5 lakhs in total but you get all your money by 2026 itself Once again if you look at only the total you will think this is the worst option because the amount is 50000 less but that could be wrong and we need to calculate to find that out Using the concept of time value of money there are two main approaches but the principle in both these approaches is the same that we have to find out the equivalent of all these amounts as on any one date Under future value approach we take all the amounts and convert it to the values as on the last date of the cash flow and in the present value approach we take all the amounts and convert it to the values as on the first date of the cash flow let's evaluate the options using future value approach so for this amount we want to find out the future value as in 2028 we have to multiply it with the growth factor Growth factor is nothing but one point rate to the power years, which we have discussed in previous videos. From 2024 to 2028, there are four years, so this will be four. And for the growth rate, we will take six percent, which is the expected inflation rate. So this will become one point zero six. Now I don't know what the exact inflation will be in the next four years. But since the last 5 to 10 years it has been around 6%, I am assuming and hoping it will be around 6% itself. So if I calculate the growth factor, it will come to 1.26. Now I'll multiply this with 4 lakhs to get its future value, and that is 5 lakh 4991. What does this 5 lakh 5000 represent? This means that if I invest 4 lakh at 6% per annum for 4 years it will become 5 lakh 5000 in 2028. Similarly, I can find the future value for this for 3 years of growth. It will become 2 lakh 38203 by 2028. This will grow for 2 years and this will grow for 1 year. This will not grow because we are getting this amount in 2028 itself. So there is no need to find out the future value. So all these amounts represent the money I will have in 2028 if I invested them the moment I got and that total is 18,23,354. This is the money which I can use for comparison because this represents the worth of all the sum of money as on the same date in 
Now if I want to evaluate option 2, I have to repeat the same calculation and I will get 18,64,000. If I do the same thing for option 3, I will get 18,93,000. The thing you should remember here is that for option 3 also, you have to calculate future value till 2028. Even though the cash flow in this stream ends in 2026, if we calculate the future value only till 2026, that will not be comparable with the earlier future value which we calculated in option 1 and 2. Now that all the amounts are of 2028, we can compare them. And clearly, option 3 is better. Now let's move on to the present value approach. Here, we want to translate all the amounts to their value as on the first day of the cash flow or in 2024. Here too, I am taking the same 6% inflation rate for discounting. This 2 lakh would have lost its value by 6% in 2025 due to inflation compared to 2024. To find out this lowered value, we have to divide it by the growth factor. When we divide it, we generally call it discount factor, but the formula remains the same. Since we have to discount it for one year to bring it from 2025 to 2024, it will be 1.06 to the power 1. After dividing, it becomes 1,88,679. This means that getting 2 lakh in 2025 is as good as getting 1,88,679 in 2024. Because by 2025, there would have been reduction in the value of money by 6%. So what you can buy with 2 lakh in 2025 is only as much as what you can buy with 1,88,679 in 2024. This amount does not require any adjustment as it already is in 2024 terms. This will have to be discounted twice to take it from 26 to 24. So that will have to be divided by 1.06 to the power 2 and you get 5,33,998. Similarly, if we discount these amounts for 3 and 4 years and add them all up, we get 14,44,267. This is the present value of all the amounts as on today or 2024. So getting this cash flow in this pattern is equivalent to getting 14,44,267 right away. I will do the same calculation for the other options and these are the results. So option 3 once again turns out to be better. Whether you take future value approach or present value approach, you get the same result if the rates are the same. And this is the worth of the cash flow in 2024 and this is the worth of the cash flow in 2028. In fact, if you take this and multiply it with the growth factor, you will get this amount. So they neatly match up with each other. Also, it is not necessary that you have to take value as of the first year or last year only. You can also calculate the value of all the monies as on some mid date, let's say 2026. In that case, you will have to calculate future value for these two and present value for these two. That will also be equally valid for making this comparison and will give you the same result. The only criteria you need to keep in mind is that the amount should be brought to the same date. I hope you now have a broad idea on how it works and for more detail on how the calculation works, please check out my other videos, the links of which are available in the description. In the meanwhile, if you learned something new and useful, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and see you soon in the next video.